The Toowoomba region's a beautiful place, but like many parts of Australia, our region floods, sometimes a lot, and there will always be floods in the future. That's why it's important we look at ways we can live with flooding whilst removing as many of the risks to people and property as possible. So how do we do that? There are lots of ways to prepare for a flood and everyone has a role to play. Let's look at this from a planner's perspective. A tool used to look at planning for future floods is flood mapping. Our region's flood studies incorporate the latest data, modelling techniques and community flood information. These were undertaken by specialist engineers. Using the flood studies, we assessed flood risk by looking at how deep, fast and far floodwaters spread, how big the flood would be and how often it was likely to happen. We also looked at social aspects of each community, such as how vulnerable the community is and how it tolerates flooding. This allowed us to look at flood risks and ways to manage them. We've developed planning responses to help keep you, the people you love and the places you live safe. These look at how, where and what types of future development are safest in an area. Let's see what the flood risk categories and a few of the planning responses might look like. Kate and Ben are retired and live in a cottage. They have 12 grandchildren. They've never had a very deep, fast running flood, but people in town talk about a huge flood that happened years ago. A flood like that doesn't happen often and it's likely even their grandchildren won't see one that big. They've had occasional smaller floods, but they've always been able to wade to safety and the home wasn't damaged. Ben considered hiring someone to fill in part of the backyard to create a large play area for when the grandkids visit but realised it would impact his neighbour, so just built a small slide instead. Belle's a farmer and lives with her sister Holly on a property 10 minutes from town. There was a massive flood 30 years ago, but that was before their time. They've had smaller floods, but they've put gumboots on and got themselves and their animals to safety. A few of the sheds were waterlogged, but the farmhouse wasn't damaged. Last year, they built an office out back with floors higher than the level the water reached in past floods. They can't move the horse paddock though, because reshaping or filling land might cause risk to other people. Oscar's a PE teacher and lives in a home near a creek. A few years ago, his property flooded with water so deep and fast that two rooms of the house needed major repairs. Because he was fit and strong, he made it through the floodwaters safely, but only just and only because he chose to leave early. His grandma was visiting and needed help from him and emergency crews to escape. It's only flooded once like that in the 10 years he's lived there, but he knows it may happen again. He didn't build the waterfall and pool he was planning, as this might make flooding worse for his neighbours. Harry and Lola were hit hard by flooding a few years ago, and life has only just started getting back to normal. Before they bought their home, They'd heard it flooded badly 15 years earlier, but they loved the creek views and never imagined it could be as bad as it was. They were holidaying when the flood hit and still wonder if they'd be alive if they'd been home that day. They lost several animals, their home was badly damaged and almost all their belongings were ruined. They rebuilt, but know it may flood like that again. They've prepared a flood plan, but can't add new buildings or change the way their yard slopes because of the risk it would be to themselves, other people and properties. Jet and Erica live in a unit. During heavy rain, stormwater sometimes flows into their lounge room. Last time they had to replace the carpet. If their unit was built now, it would need to have a floor level of about 600 millimetres above the ground to lower their risk. Eve lives in a home on the other side of town. She has the same problem, except the stormwater is faster and deeper, which makes it hard to get to safety and has caused damage to her home. If she built a new home, the floor would need to be higher than the level of past floods to be safe. The Smith brothers own land they plan to build on. They'll need to investigate this in more detail though, as the land can flood and they're not sure how often or severely. In a nutshell, before they can build, they'll need to make sure people or property won't be put at risk or the flood made worse somewhere else. Mary lives in a town that's never flooded, but gets cut off by surrounding floodwaters, 
which sometimes don't clear for days or even weeks. She has learned to prepare by having emergency food, water and other essentials. But since she's had cancer, this poses a risk to her treatment needs. This is why developers couldn't build an aged care home on the land next door to her. Now, let's look at this from your perspective. To help you plan for an emergency and take measures to help yourself and your family be safe, it's important to know your flood risk. We've made this simple with a flood risk information portal. You can find out your flood risk, get tips to prepare for flooding and download a property report with ways planning and development may change to help us be safer in the future. Head online and zoom in or type your address, lot number or reference code in the search to find your property. Click on the pop-up to view your flood risk or download your property report and have your say on planning responses we're proposing for a safer, stronger and more resilient region.